Hello and welcome to this episode of Codebase's Level Up in partnership with Creative Informatics and filmed for the Ada Scott Festival. My name is Kelly Gardner and today I'm going to tell you how I got to where I am in the tech industry and then we're going to do a little tutorial with Microsoft Make Code and make our own platform game. Keep watching! This is a story of my career into the tech industry. My name is Dr. Kelly Gardner, but I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of literature. So here I am at my first graduation, where I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. And here I am at my most recent graduation, my PhD graduation, where I still had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. But this is where I've ended up. I'm currently the Digital Content and Program Facilitator at Codebase Sterling. We operate out of a beautiful building and here's my colleague Barry. We run the Level Up program. When I was little, I wanted to be many things. Mostly, I wanted to be a mermaid. I soon realised that wasn't plausible and settled on law. I wanted to be a lawyer or a judge and I wanted to right the wrongs that were committed. But once I was in law school, I soon realised I hated it. I hated law. I hated studying law. I hated it so much that I just stopped trying. But fortunately, at the same time, I was also studying English literature and philosophy. And I actually really loved those. I loved reading books. I loved writing. So I stayed on and I did a postgraduate and I did travel writing and creative writing and old English and I absolutely loved it. While I was doing that, I was also reading books like Frankenstein and Dracula and my supervisor suggested I looked into the Gothic Masters course at Stirling University. Well, I applied and I got in. I moved to Stirling from Johannesburg, South Africa in 2010 and I've never looked back. I started studying a Master of Letters in the Gothic Imagination and this is what my class looked like. It was wonderful. We read ghost stories and spoke about monsters and critical theory and I enjoyed every single second of it. But once I graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do as a job. So I stayed at the university and I decided to do a Doctor of Philosophy in Gothic Literature. And I was really passionate about zombies. So I did my thesis on the emergence and development of the sentient zombie, zombie monstrosity in postmodern and post-human Gothic. And it was wonderful. For four years, I watched zombie movies and I read zombie books. And um, I eventually graduated with a PhD in zombies, which sounds crazy. But I had no idea what I wanted to do after that. So I stayed at the university and I traveled all over the world for conferences and I published um, articles and book chapters. And my book chapters were read all over the world. But at the same time, I needed to make a living. So I started a bakery business. Um, I learned all about becoming self-employed and I managed to watch The Walking Dead while I baked at the same time so I could do both at once. But at the same time I was also teaching at the university and I was teaching first and second year English literature and I really really enjoyed it but after doing it for four years, reading the same books and teaching the same narratives, I got a little bored and I needed a little bit of a change. And that's how I ended up at Codebase. I saw a job for a reception administrator and I applied for it. I knew nothing about the tech industry, but I knew that I wanted to work at Codebase. I'd read up about everything they do and I felt quite passionate about it. So I applied and soon I was running all of the social media and I loved it. All social media is, is storytelling and connecting with people. And I'd spent so many years studying narratives that I knew how to tell a story. I knew how to connect with people. And I loved every second of it. But there was more to Codebase than just the tech industry and supporting tech startups. They also ran clubs like Pre-Wired and Digital Skills for Girls. So I started volunteering at these and I had no idea how to write code or anything about electronics. 
But I was so passionate about helping people, I threw myself in head first and I enjoyed every single session. Now I am on the board of Prewired and I help design the workshops that we run at our sessions. I've taught myself all about makey makeys and micro bits and I'm learning how to use my Raspberry Pi. I'm starting to build things with electronics and I'm loving every second of it. So now that I've told you all about me and how I got into technology, let's start the tutorial. If you could head over to arcade.makecode.com, we'll kick off with an awesome little Wonder Woman maze tutorial. So here we are on the homepage of Make Code Arcade. And over here is where all of your projects will be. If you scroll down a bit, you'll get to the tutorials. And if you go to the section below that, you'll get to the multi-part tutorials. So we're going to run through the first tutorial for Wonder Woman 1984. So we'll click on that and then we'll start the tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own maze and we'll navigate Wonder Woman through the maze. When you're ready to start, your screen should look like this. Over here, we've got our arcade simulator, so you can build your game and you can test it over here. You'll be able to find all of your blocks in the center section, and this main bit is your workspace. The instructions for the tutorial will be over here, and if you click this light bulb, it'll give you a hint. So the first thing it tells us to do is to open the sprites toolbox and grab a set my sprite to block. So Wonder Woman is going to be our sprite. We'll open the sprite box and we'll drag this out and drop it into our on start block. Then it tells you to click in the gray box and draw Wonder Woman. It says tip, draw Wonder Woman small enough to fit through the pathway so we know we can't make her too big. So if we click in the gray block, we'll come through to our little drawing area. And you can use these colors on the left hand side to draw your own sprite. So you could try draw your own Wonder Woman. I, however, am quite fond of princesses. And I'm going to use a princess instead. I'm going to use this princess with the blue hair. Here is my sprite. Once you've got your sprite drawn, you'll just click done. We've done that and we should see our sprite land in our little arcade. There she is, right in the center. So we'll go over to step two. In the controller drawer, it tells us to grab a move my sprite with buttons block. So this is going to help us move our sprite around. So we'll come to the controller box and we'll grab a move my sprite with buttons and we'll drop it underneath the set my sprite block. Then it tells us to click on the plus button. So if we click this, we can change the speed that our sprite moves. So it suggests we change them both to 150. So let's change that to 150 and let's test it out over here. So if we move the joystick, our sprite moves left, right and up and down quite quickly. Let's click next and move on to the next step. So now from the scene box, we want to pull out a set color background and drop it into the on start block. And then we get to choose a color. Now we must remember this is going to be the color of the pathway in our maze. So we'll grab set background color and inside the little gray box, we'll pick a color. I think I'm going to pick green. The whole background of our little arcade game now should go green. There we have it. And we'll move on to the next step. Now it tells us from the scene to pull a set tile map block. So we'll go into scene and we'll pull a set tile map and we'll drop that down. We won't click on it just yet. We'll move to the next information block. So this is how you'll draw your maze in the next step. First, we are going to fill in the entire canvas with one tile. Then we're going to use the eraser tool to erase a path for our maze. So let's do that. We'll click in the gray box 
and over here we'll find our tiles. So you can click through from forest, aquatic, dungeon or miscellaneous. And once you've chosen a theme, you click the little arrows over here to choose different ones. I'm going to choose dungeon and clicking these little arrows will give you different options. You can also draw your own tile, but we won't do that today. We'll just pick a nice dungeon tile. I think I'm going to go with this tile. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the full bucket and we're going to fill this entire section with that tile. And then we'll click done. And the next section says, use the eraser tool to draw the path for your maze. So clicking back into the tile map, the eraser tool is up here next to the pencil. So if we click that, we can now draw a path for our maze. I'm not going to make it too difficult this time. I'm just going to do a very big spiral. That didn't work. There we go. So now I've drawn a very sketchy looking spiral and I'm going to click done. And if we look in our simulator, we can see our maze. Next step. Now the instructions tell us to outline the walls of the maze with a wall creation tool. We'll click OK. We'll click into the tile map and we will choose the wall tool over here. This little tool that looks like a wall. Click it and it turns red. When you move your cursor onto your tile map, you can see that little red shadow. Once we trace all around our maze, our sprite is only going to be able to walk in this little area that's gray. Our sprite won't be able to cross or walk on any area that's got this red overlay on it. So I'm going to fill in the whole tile map. Now I have gone around the entire maze with the wall tool, our sprite will only be able to walk on these grey blocks. But remember, in our game our background is green, so our sprite will have to stick to the green area. Let's test that. We'll use our joystick and our sprite can't get through the walls. Our sprite can walk on the green, but can't get through the walls. Perfect. Next. Now it tells us in the tile map editor, choose a new tile from the gallery to be the start location of where you want your sprite to be. Then you get a place my sprite on top of random block and you drop it into your start blocks. We'll come into our tile map and we're going to choose our starting tile. I'm going to choose this little flame wall and I'm going to put it over there. What we're going to do in the next step is we're going to place our sprite on top of that tile. So we need to remember what that tile looks like. We'll come into the scene box and we'll grab a place my sprite on top of random. And now we need to remember what type of tile we want to place our sprite on top of. And there we can see our little start tile we've chosen. And when we click that, our sprite should start on top of it. There we go. So our sprite moves, but when we start the game over, she'll always start on that tile. Next step. Now what we want is for the camera to follow our sprite. Currently, if we move our sprite down, we lose sight of her. And what we want is for the camera to follow wherever our sprite is moving. So we'll come into our scene box and we'll grab a camera follow sprite and drop it underneath. Now the camera should follow our sprite. She moves. There we go. Great. Next step. It tells us now to go back to our tile map and to choose a new tile from the gallery and for this tile to be the end location of our maze. 
we'll click into our tile map and this area over here is the end but we don't want to use this tile because that's the same as our start tile so if we move these along what if we chose this pink tile and pop that over there this tile indicates the end of our maze we'll click done now we want to tell the game what's going to happen once our sprite overlaps with that pink tile. We come to our scene box and we grab an on sprite of kind player overlaps. And what do we want it to overlap? We want it to overlap with our end tile. And now we get to tell it what happens. What happens when that sprite overlaps with the end tile? We go into game and we choose game over. But we don't want the game to lose when our sprite overlaps with that tile. We want the game to win. So we click that and it changes to win. Let's test that out. So we'll come into our game and we'll move around the maze. What happened? So our sprite won. But something exciting that you can do is you can change this effect. So currently we're on the confetti effect, but we can change it by clicking that plus button and we could have splatter, splash, bubbles, a star field. I'm going to leave it on confetti, I think. I quite like the confetti effect. And then we'll click next. We want to make this more challenging now and we can add a timer into the mix. So if we pop into the info box, we can grab a start countdown and we can drop this into the on start block. I'm going to move this down a bit so it's a bit more clear. And this suggests we change the amount to 20 seconds, but you can change it to whatever amount of time you want it to be. Now, as soon as our game starts, we can see the countdown. We need to move our sprite through the maze as fast as possible to try beat the countdown. My maze is quite a simple maze, so it's quite easy for me to it's quite easy for me to win. But if you make your maze more complicated, you could give yourself quite a challenge. Let's click next. So the tutorial is telling us we've now completed part one. In the instruction box, you can click this link and that'll take you to the next tutorial. And in the next tutorial, you can add items for your sprite to collect. But that's all I'm going to be covering today. So I'm going to click finish. Once you've finished your game, it'll give you the option to save it. So I'm going to change it to Ada Scott. And I'm going to click publish project. And once you've published your project, it'll give you um, the address to your game. And you can share this address with us. So if you've made a really interesting game, why not share it with us at sterling at thisiscodebase.com we would love to see your games or share it with all of your friends and family as well and have everyone play it once you finish the tutorial all of your blocks open up and they'll give you a lot more options to add fun things into your game that's it for now though thank you so much for joining us we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and we hope to see you at our next video bye